You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. The man who destroyed Bill Cosby's career. Oh, Don't start like that. <laughs> starting it. <laughs> Hannibal Burris. Hannibal you know, Burris is hell. Every time What's he happening? comes here, you say the same thing about him. It's my right? guy. But listen, that's a good body. You got to always take credit for that body, Hannibal. It's a it's a interesting situation to be a part of. <laughs> but you've moved uh, on past that. But how are you still to... moving around? Like, do comedians hate you? Uh, I mean, I, I don't think so. No, because I, I, nobody... Yeah. They look at Bill Cosby as a god, and then... I mean, I'm sure it's some that, that feel a, a certain way about it, but, I mean, I don't, I don't know how to, to handle that. No I, I can't worry about that. I just got to do my work and... And keep it moving. No 60 year old women running up on you talking about you ruined our hero. No. Some people online, it's this <laughs> woman named Eunice that <laughs> Eunice. she was going hard at me for a while. Like, you coon, you destroyed up good black man, you stole that coon. And she was just going hard. Yeah. Eunice was hitting me on Twitter. Now, if you had some inside information on Eddie Murphy, would you put that out, too? I don't want to be a part of nobody's <laughs> stuff anymore, man. I ain't, I ain't being a part of nobody's stuff no more. I was I was doing a joke. I was, at a, I was at a gig. I wasn't on TV. I mm -hmm. wasn't on the radio. I was at a gig, and somebody filmed it, and it, and it went like that. Uh, but that's it's pretty crazy, man. So did, okay. You're not just screwing anybody's career in your stand-up now? <laughs> nah, man, I do all TSA jokes and that's it. <laughs> what, Keep what? it real bland. TSA jokes, talk about kids, my nieces and nephews, property values, and stuff like that. Word on the street is that you leaked all the stories about Nate Parker's past rape out of <laughs> <laughs> I heard that was you. So Hannibal, I heard that was you. You're the reason we can't see Birth of a Nation? <laughs> I didn't get a role in the movie, man, so I just uh, <laughs> you just had to do, do what that, I had to do. This what this is about? <laughs> Bill promised you a role, you didn't give it to him? I'm a petty man. Petty yeah. man. <laughs> no. Now, you think, is that, you think that's your legacy forever? Part of it, sure. Damn. Uh, yeah, part of it. I mean, I do. I feel like I do good work, but that's uh, one thing. that it, That's how it went. I can't, I can't really control it. I can only... Uh, Try to do good work and, and keep cool. Keep you like going. you like a rapper who caught a body, <laughs> so you're always tied to the body you caught. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like I'm, Fifty and Jaga always be together. They always talk. Yeah, Jay Z and Nas, or Nas and Jay Z. However, you think that situation went, you caught a body. Uh, I mean, it's just I did a I did a bit that you've been I doing, mean, and that I've been doing. It wasn't it. <laughs> I mean, if it got put out like that, I wish there was a more polished version. Of it. it was still in kind of rough shape as a as a joke, but mm -hmm. it was it was a joke. I felt like there was some some truth to it, and I was just talking about hypocrisy, and uh, it went like that. But if if people don't um, if people don't believe all, if you, do you not believe all the women? Then I don't know. Can you sleep at night, Hannibal? He's, <laughs> what? What? Can you sleep at night? Can I sleep at night? I'm just asking. <laughs> I don't know. Can you? Like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> now I know you didn't get a chance to see the video music awards, yeah. but they did have like a slew of different hosts, uh, comedians in particular. Mm -hmm. Key and Peele, yeah, were some of the main hosts, and Jay Farrell was um, one of the hosts cool. as well from the audience. Mm -hmm. And there was not such great feedback from Key and Peele. What do you think about them as a comedy duo? I like Key and Peele. They got a lot of sketches that that I enjoy. I've seen this show a bunch, and they. Try some weird stuff and their sketches can get out of control. The Family Matters sketch they did comes to mind with uh, Steve Urkel and, and Winslow mm -hmm. uh, and the exec. And they got some crazy stuff. My favorite them. sketch was the one they did where they did the, um, where he was a rapper and he had put out a, a song talking about mm -hmm. how he killed somebody and then yeah. he was being interrogated by the police. Oh, yeah, and yeah, they were playing a song? Funny. That was funny. Yeah, that one was funny. That's happened in real life with some with some <laughs> rappers where they've brought up. The, That's what say, makes it funny when things are yeah, kind of like they, things that happen in real yeah, life on like the first 48 or something. Yeah, I think they did that to, did they try to do that to see murder Where they said his name is see murder Listen <laughs> yeah. and listen to yeah, these yeah, lyrics. Yep, yep, yep. And, other, and I've seen cases with other rappers where they said you talked about doing this. So you, It's always weird to me when people this online where people commit crimes or they write, and then they post, hey, we just hit them. Oh, what I hate it. What are you it. doing? And then they be like, stop snitching. <laughs> like somebody <laughs> snitching on me, you snitching on yourself. Are you robbing, beating up people for Facebook likes? The internet has really just changed how uh, people operate. Now, the reason had... I brought that up was because Ari Spears was here the other day and he yep. was saying that Key and Peele, um don't have the, what they don't is have it, have like the black swagger audience, basically. of the black People say that person. about you too. They're like, y'all yeah. don't necessarily have a black audience. Black people don't necessarily find y'all funny. Really? Yeah. Hey, 
I mean, I when I'm out and about, I, I mean, all types of people uh, come up to me and, and, and say what's up and, and enjoy my stuff. And my shows, my shows would be primarily white. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's but out the yeah, huh? I mean, I, I feel like I do good work and I, I talk about what I think is funny and that, that hits with, with everybody. And that's what? what's funny because you talk about hip hop stuff a lot. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, y'all must never have heard Hannibal. Well, I don't why think... do you think that your audience is mostly white? Like, what's the reason for that? And you're from Chicago. So it's yeah. Not, like, and you're I black. Don't know. I mean, black. it's been, like, really it's been black. growing. I, I do uh, a <laughs> really dark, like, <laughs> super dark. Uh, Tyrese Dark. <laughs> when I was in, in high school, you know, you get roasted in high school, so you, they just called me every every dark skin. Wesley like Snipes. The Wesley Snipes. <laughs> Wesley Snipes followed me on Twitter uh, last week, and I was like, oh, man. It was like, oh, yeah, dark skin legend. Was it the real Wesley Snipes? Or it was, was a real verified account? verified <laughs> Wesley Snipes account. And it was like dark yeah, I follow skin Wesley. Legend. Wesley be talking that shit. <laughs> But yeah, man, I just uh, I try to just do what's funny. I can't try to switch up and 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 say I'm gonna go this way. I talk about real stuff in, in my life and and just my genuine perspective. So that's what it is, and that connects with who it connects with. Now I I, I heard that you was uh at this, what comedy show was that? Isn't that a comedy show you did, Envy? Which one? That Rip was hosting. I don't know. But, what happened? Yeah, and, and you came out and it was an all black room, and you told a couple of jokes, and you said to the crowd, "Up, oh, I don't, I don't yeah, think this is going. Yeah, that was there. Yeah, that was a few years this ago. Ain't work yeah, well. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I was <laughs> it having. Got a, it got I, yeah, it got awkward. I was having an off day that day too. I think something was going on with my girl, and I just went up. Yeah, I didn't have it. Yeah, that that was, day, that wasn't it. I felt bad for you. You know, it was one of those ones where you be like, "All right." He, he didn't. He didn't finish. He was like, "You know what? I'm gonna go home." I'm gonna That's leave. smart though. Like <laughs> in those leaving. moments, do you do you walk off or do you say, "Fuck it, I'm gonna keep going." I'm gonna sometimes it's not your night, man. It's just sometimes it's not your night. It's not. Life or death is comedy. So comedy is subjective. Sometimes you hit them, sometimes you don't. Mm -hmm. And you just keep it moving and write some more and, and, and on to the next show. They didn't boo him, right. though. Yeah. He, he didn't give him time to. He got the hell out of there. That's smart. <laughs> he got it. Now, I see when Dave Chappelle performs, he has people put their phones in his like sealed up plastic bags. Sure. And we all know Kevin Hart when he performs, you can't take your phone out. How do you feel about people filming you when you're on I don't, stage? I don't like it, but I don't want to go through the trouble of making people not do it. I don't like being filmed, for one, just because it, it kind of can throw you off of your flow. Where, you know, I, I know a lot of musicians, or rappers don't care because their product. Is already worked on mm, and right. perfected in the studio. Where with comedy, if I'm trying out comedy at a small spot for free, then I'm kind of talking from the top of the dome and trying to come up with the bit there. Right. And so if somebody's filming you, it it makes you at least me not be able to Experiment. create and talk from an honest place. If I see somebody, so it kind of just throws me when I'm when I'm working on stuff. So I I really much rather not be filmed. But people film on the slide. People do it, but. Also, it's just you don't want to have your material spoiled if you if you got if you got new stuff that you're working on. Right. Or oh, you don't want to kill a legend. You know what I'm saying? If an unfinished bit leaks <laughs> about said legend, Damn. you know. Now, hey, now are you a magician and a, and a poker dealer? That's what it says. <laughs> no, I just write what? crazy stuff. <laughs> I just magician, write what? Magician and poker dealer. A poker dealer. No, I just write weird stuff in my bio, man. Oh, you wrote your own bio. <laughs> <laughs> Just put in whatever. Magician, poker dealer, philanthropist. <laughs> now you, you played Cupid in BJ the Chicago Kids video. You, you, yeah. That's something you like to do in real life, be a love connector? Uh, Nah, I'm not even a, a good love connector for myself. Uh, yeah, no, nah, I'm not a good connector. If somebody already wants, I can't bring two strangers together. Yeah. If a girl like, hey, I want to holler at your homie, then I can say, here, here he is. But as far as you need to meet such and such, you'll be great. That's not I'm me. so good at that. Yeah? Yeah, I'm great at hooking people up. Sure. You've, you've made marriages start? I actually have gotten some people married. Really? And then felt bad because maybe it didn't work out later on down the line. But, but you know, the was, initial love was there. Yeah. That's good. Mm -hmm. Now, is it true that you threw $26 in a guy's face because <laughs> he wanted a picture with you and you was eating and he wouldn't let you finish your wings? Well, you, you, you kind of condensed the story. Okay. And this is a... Uh, sometimes our white fans will have this... This entitlement. No, and, white people have a sense of entitlement. Not just white fans. And so I'll... <laughs> uh, the, the conflict of having like, a lot of white fans isn't... I think some of them don't even really mess with black people in real life, you know? And so I'll see... You know, I'll look at, you know, a, a Twitter trending topic, and then I'll see somebody saying some wild racist shit, and then, and then I'll go 
and click on the profile. Like, Damn, this person follows me. Oh man. But this fan in uh in Chattanooga, yeah, this dude. Uh, I was I was eating these. It was great wings. These mm -hmm. grilled wings, top five wings I've had in my life. And I and I was crushing them. <laughs> and then he come up and say, Hey man, I was at the show. Can I take a picture? I said, Yeah, give me a couple minutes. Finish these wings. It was a low key bar. Ten people he said, Come on, man. Let me uh get the let me get let me get a picture. I said, Come on, give me a couple minutes and clean up my hands and. I'll take. The, I'll be happy to take the picture with you. He said, "You rather me take a picture or take a wing?" And I said, "I'd rather you get Whoa. the." And I, said, Whoa. and I said, "I'd rather you get the fuck out of my face right Whoa. now." Wow. And then, and then he gets all. And then I go to the bathroom, and he <laughs> coincidentally is going to the bathroom at the same time. Wow. I get far away from him, and then he yells, "I thought you were cool, man. You come off cool on stage. You think you Dave Chappelle? You like as if." <laughs> I thought you was one of the good ones, man. I think you think you Dave Chappelle acting like that. And I was like, dude, you pay for a show. You didn't pay for a meet and greet. I was happy to take a picture with you. Just give me a couple minutes. We paid $26 for the show. And then I went over to the bar and I grabbed $25, $26 and I threw it at him. If that was you, if that's what it was about, then take your money back. He ain't swing on you? No, he didn't swing on me. He ain't try you or nothing? He didn't try me. Where you was at? Chattanooga, yeah, Tennessee. Tell you. Boy, you lucky you didn't get hung out there. Uh, or even shot. Yeah, that's an open carry state. <laughs> so, uh, you know, but sometimes, I, I mean, I try to, now I, I keep it more mellow and and, and I, don't, I try not to get into volatile situations like that because it's not worth it. And that could be assault. Somebody could be like, oh my God, he hit me in the face $26. Sure. Yeah, he could have pulled something and I got lucky on that one. Do you have a bad temper? Um, Not a bad temper. Just, uh, nah, not a bad temper. I just, I can't, people can't set me off, but I try to just, in, in certain situations, just always remember what's at stake and, and just keep it cool and just and, and walk away or, you know, say something back, but don't don't try to. It's, it's, I've seen too many people just fall mm -hmm. uh, through just some, some simple BS, you know. Now, I see you've been dealing with uh, Uber drivers yeah, who are playing their own mixtapes. <laughs> I've had that same experience. You must have been in L.A. Yeah, I was in L.A., man. Yeah. And it was a 40-minute ride, man. Yeah. And I know he just wanted me to... Uh, Say who's this? That, it, that's they get. That's how they get you. That's all he wanted. That's all, you, that's that's all he wanted. And that's I said it. he wanted that, and I, I'm not getting it to him. him. I'm just yeah. gonna sit back here and stew and listen to this music. I feel like maybe I did something bad in the past to make me deserve this. So I'm gonna just stew and try to let this make me stronger. <laughs> <laughs> like if I can get through this, I can get through it. He's teaching me patience, and uh, and and yeah, it was so he bad. He never said nothing. He never said nothing. He never said you feeling it. I can see him peeping in the rear view. Trying to see if I was vibing. Some Why of the beats, some of the beats were alright, but he, <laughs> dad, he just had no charisma Why on the mic. Why you ask him to turn it off? It was just, it was just me <laughs> being strong. It wasn't. I wanted to ask him to turn it off, but I said I want to see if I can get through this and how will I feel if I just let this ride and put myself in a bad situation. There's two ways you can handle that. You can either yeah. say who this and yeah. start the conversation, uh -huh. or you can be like. Damn, that shit trash. You don't got the new future or something. You don't got the new 21 Savage. Put some Vince Staples on it. I wanted like, to keep it neutral. I didn't want to. I didn't want to big him up, and I didn't want to uh, hurt his feelings and right. crush his dream because he could grow at some point. No, I just wanted to keep it neutral. Guys, all Uber drivers are over 50, and still yeah. trying to live out their rap dreams. Not, in not LA. all of them. Are over 40 <laughs> plus at no, least. Some of them are younger. I ain't never met no younger. Have you ever done Uber pool by accident? I did Uber pool uh, one time when I was traveling just because I was lonely. <laughs> <laughs> Life of a comedian. Yeah, I was just like, yeah, let me see who getting in. Get it? <laughs> it was a chick. She got in there. She was scared of me. It was a white chick. Oh, she okay. didn't speak. She so just kind of kept to the side of the car. Yeah, it was not. A, it was no vibes in there at all. Now, have you ever fan? When's the last time you fanned out? I was watching the VMAs and Chance the Rapper was on the red carpet and Beyonce walked past and he lost his mind. Really? And stopped to talk to her for a second, but he got super excited. Yeah. Who's the last person you got super excited, kind of had a fan moment? You know, it's funny. I was, uh, <laughs> um, it was a couple months ago during a uh, Governor's Ball weekend and uh, Vic Mensa had a party at 4040 Club. Mm hmm. And uh, Chance was there, and you know, they, it's a 4040 club, the way it's set up, they have the suites, and they got the regular bar. So people are kind of, the party's in the suite, but people kind of moving back and forth between the bar, and it gets about two in the morning, and it's a little bit of commotion. You feel, you know, sometimes people about to come in, you feel them before you even see Kiri them. Kiri yeah, check that they move type things of thing. around, right. And uh, Jay-Z and Beyonce come in. And so then uh, <laughs> they come in, and then they go into the suites. Now these suites that everybody could move through back and forth freely is now Crowded. No. Uh, high security. security it's a, a right rope now. comes out of nowhere. It's a security <laughs> guard. I was already in there. And they're like, no, you can't get 
<laughs> so now I got to try to politic to get back in somewhere I already was. Eventually, I get back in. And uh, so now it's uh, Jay and Beyonce sitting and uh, Chance and Vic. We saw that picture. And uh, and so they start posing for uh, a picture. And I'm like, this is great. I know Chance and Vic, the Chicago homies. I'm excited for them to be a part of this. So I pull out my phone to grab the same shot, like a second afterwards. And I don't know if it was because the flash was on, but uh, Jay-Z was like, hey man, be cool. <laughs> God damn! Be cool, oh, you no. groupie. Damn, uh, damn, I was just trying to. I would never damn. just. I would never just pull out the phone yeah. and on them out of nowhere. <laughs> but damn. I was just. But they were just posing for the picture, and I was like, "Let me get this shot too." Be cool, and then in my in my picture, so you see, I sent you that pic. That's him pointing at you. Yeah, no, it's Beyonce's angrily pointing at me in the picture. Oh, you did send me that. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Yeah, it was, but that was just, and he was just, I thought huh? you told me you got kicked out. I no, I didn't get kicked out. Oh. I just got scolded. I left. But I was like, God, you don't tell me to be cool. You've been a huge <laughs> rap. I've been listening to your music for like 20 years, and you with some friends of mine. It's exciting. You no, I'm not going like to be cool. You sound like the guy that wanted to take a picture now, and you was no, eating the ring now. No, no. They, it, it they were already posing for a picture. <laughs> right. I was chilling. They wasn't there for a meet and greet, Hannibal. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I was right. taking a picture. I wasn't trying to be in a picture. How come Chance and Vic ain't stand up for you? No, they did. Oh, they no, was, no, that's cool. That's they, our homie. Yeah, no, they actually did because yeah, I'm looking. Hey, y'all gonna um, vouch for And I'm looking at them. And, I'm, and then I see them try to whisper. And then Jay was like, nah, he still needs to be cool. Wow. <laughs> that's crazy. It's pretty funny. Yeah, that's funny. That's yeah. actually hurtful. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Are you they would, to... Oh, they wouldn't have did that to Kevin Hart. <laughs> 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 that's all I'm saying, they Hannibal. Wouldn't hey. They wouldn't have did that to Chappelle. I think it's funny. Now when I listen to Reasonable Doubt, I'm like, yeah, man, can I live? This dude scolded me. <laughs> <laughs> this is dope. <laughs> if we have a pleasant time sitting, if we at the dice table, G up, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Be cool. Now, Eric Andre, did you, yeah. help, did you help write that uh, sexual harassment sketch he did to T.I.? Oh, no, man. I don't write none of that stuff. Yeah. That I, was sexual harassment. You think so? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he does some weird stuff on there, man, where a lot of times I don't know the bits is going to happen because he, he wants to get a genuine reaction out of me. Yeah. So I'm on there and I'm like, "Oh, you showing your dick again? Okay, there we go with that." So he's a he's a That's wild not his dude, real man. Penis. Come on, huh? That wasn't his real penis. Oh well, in other scenes he shows his dick and he had the the white guy come out naked. That's when Ti kind of flipped a little bit. Mm -hmm. It was a uh, it was a funny scene. Would you have advised against that if he would have told you this is what I'm gonna do? It's his show, so I can't really you but know. But like, if he's like, "What do you think?" I would have been, like, "Are you doing that one again?" <laughs> <laughs> he knows not to ask me about that, cause, but he's a he's a dude. He wants to do what he's gonna do, and and try to get a, a reaction out of people and make people uncomfortable. Now, what happened to your show? My show, I decided not to do it anymore. I didn't I had a a fun time making it, but ultimately, the format uh, it didn't fit me. I think, and uh, it was cool to do, and I, I learned a lot. And uh, I'm looking forward to, to doing something else on television probably next year. But right now, I'm just focusing on the tour mm -hmm. and uh, doing more stand-up. The, the tour is called Hannibal Montanable. The Hannibal Montanable What experience. the hell does that mean? I think I know. It doesn't mean it. It's just a stupid-ass rhyme, man. Gotcha. There's <laughs> <laughs> not much to it. It's, it's a dumb words. rhyme. It's a stupid rhyme. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's it, man. <laughs> just talking about life. Did you do something over to Amigos Versace? Hannah Montana? I mean? uh, did I do? No, I didn't. No, it's uh no, it's just Hannibal Montana mm. off of the Hannah Montana show. Just a dumb name. Yeah. That's it. I don't my I don't I just have weird names for my my first special was called Animal Furnace just cuz it sort of rhymes with Hannibal Burris. That's it. <laughs> it doesn't rhyme with it. <laughs> this guy's <is> crazy. What? <laughs> what? Yeah. Now, did you have a chance to see Donald Glover's Atlanta show yet? Because I saw you were um, tweeting about it, and we also, of course, know the story about you pretending to be his, his agent. agent. Uh, no, I haven't seen the show yet. I'm excited to see it. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty funny. You pretend to be his agent. I uh, <laughs> one time in uh, in when I was in Vegas, I saw Eddie Griffin was performing on Fourth of July, and I was excited that I wanted to see how much tickets were. And tickets were ninety bucks. I was like, man, that's a lot. Because I was going to bring three people with me. If I was going by myself, I mean, I'll, I'll pay so 90. pay for everybody? <laughs> I would have paid for everybody, yeah. And so um, 
And so I called the the venue and said, hey, uh, I want to get some tickets uh, for my client to see uh, uh, to see Eddie Griffin. They said, uh, "What's who's your client?" I'm like Donald Glover, and they said, "All right." <laughs> and then I just show up. It was up. that easy. Yeah, it was that easy. <laughs> Why'd you pick Donald Glover? I don't know. I don't know if I just talked to him on the phone or something. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why couldn't you just be you? Yeah, you could have been yourself. This is a few years ago. No, I right? Yeah, I didn't. I haven't right? have any pull at all. People yeah. knew Donald Glover three years ago. Yeah, Donald, Donald was on Community right. and, and, oh, and did yeah, some yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and right. had uh, a couple mixtapes as Childish Gambino. So he had uh, a lot more name recognition at the time. And so I show up. Me and we go to the show. Mm-hmm. The show was amazing. It's a great show. They let you in and everything without let me in. All four of you. And then uh, they gave you two free drinks. <laughs> I think no. I think we paid for our drinks, mm-hmm. but. Afterwards, after the show, uh, uh, we, some dude comes up and says, hey, uh, you said Donald Glover was going to be here. <laughs> and Donald's not even here. I'm like, hey, man, it, it already happened. The show's over. I can't, <laughs> <laughs> can't give you the comedy back, man. <laughs> we had a, Bill Cosby told a lot of his victims, too. Oh, I can't oh, give man. it back to you. Oh, you keep bringing it in. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, that's, that that's it. it. Like, that's the story. That yeah, <laughs> that's the end of the story. <laughs> yeah, and then we left, and then we went and gambled or something. I don't know. And you that, didn't even give him. A, oh, you did give him a heads up though that you. Were I told. Doing, yeah, yeah, I said. Yeah, I told him. I think so. I don't think. I think everything's smooth. Now shout you, out to Eddie Griffin. No disrespect. You should shout out Donald Glover. <laughs> you, that's a disrespect. <laughs> you do the Comedy Central roast. Yeah, lot. the Bieber roast. And they cut your they cut your joke out on one of your jokes. Yeah. What joke, what joke was it? It was too real. It actually wasn't even really a joke. It, it was, was a just joke more about of, his redemption. Yeah, I said, uh, thank you for having me, Bieber. Actually, you should be thanking me for participating in this extremely transparent attempt to be more likable in the public eye. And I hope it doesn't work. <laughs> and then afterwards, we were walking off stage and Bieber said, that was good, but we cutting that. Oh. oh, he knew he was connected. Well, yeah. But it was real. I, I told everybody that roast was the uh, exorcism of Justin Bieber. They was giving yeah. it. They, exor- they took the nigga out of him, and they cleaned <laughs> him back up, made him shiny, and put him right on the back of the top of the charts. Yeah, he started making uh, music that adults can listen to after. Yeah, that. like he had big songs, but nobody they weren't playing "Baby" in the club. But you know, they play that "Where Are You Now" and they play "Sorry" in the club. So. Started making music that grown-ups can like. So you mean to tell me you can make jokes at a roast about somebody's death, but you can't tell a true statement about Bieber blatant attempt at redemption? Uh, you can, but you know they got Final Cut, and they I think it, I, it. I think it, since he did that speech at the end too, yeah. it kind of would have. I feel like they would have made that would have made it undermined it a little bit. So they didn't want to have it in there. I didn't. I mean, you know, I don't care. It was just I got my jokes off, and it was it was a cool look for me, and I had a lot of fun. Is there anything off limits when it comes to comedy? No, you just gotta try to to, to make it funny and, and connect. And if it don't work, then then make it better. I mean, it's certain audiences that's not gonna like certain things, mm-hmm. and that's just the nature of what uh, doing comedy is. I mean, obviously you pick your spots. If you're doing a corporate gig, then mm-hmm. it's some sort of stuff you're not gonna say. If you're doing a gig for two thousand people at a Carmax convention or something like that, versus doing a, a comedy club. At, at midnight, it's, going, it's different. It's different, um, you know, comedy. It's different approaches. You know, they're going to have, you know, certain guidelines. Don't talk about this. Don't talk about that. So if that's in the contract of what you signed, then that's when it's off limits because then it's uh, messing your money up. Right. Do you have different sets for different places? Not different sets. Just a different um, – I might have different material for a certain mm-hmm. – a certain place, you know, at a casino, I'm gonna open up and say it is it's pretty crazy that's out there somebody is destroying their children's college fund right now. Or I'll talk about a certain city when I'm when I get to that city. I don't have different sets really. If I'm doing something corporate, then I'll tone it down a little bit mm-hmm. and, and bring it in and try to keep it more general, just general family stuff or, or traveling stuff. And, right. And try to tailor to that. Now, did you ever find yourself having to like really be an uh, uh, advocate against rape? Because I saw on CNN one time, this white woman was up there giving you the utmost props. She yeah. was like, Hannibal Burris, he took a stand and mm-hmm. stood up for us victims. What are you talking about? I don't know the lady's name. Mm-hmm. She wanted the ladies to cause me allegedly rape. Uh, I mean, I, I think everybody should be against against rape. Right. And, yeah, I'm I mean, talking about like a real advocate. Like, they was painting you as the 
guy that was gonna go out there and protest with them and march with them and I think it was just the situation where they were a bit shocked that I mean all the women had already said it and and I said something and then it got attention which made it it was kind of shocking to me in that way because I'm the ultimately the least important figure in it in my mind where that situation happened it's the the people mm -hmm. and him and it's me doing a joke shouldn't make me just shouldn't put me on that type of pedestal I mean I think anybody is any any reasonable person is is against that type of behavior that's why I said you shouldn't have got the credit for it because you was joking yeah it wasn't like you was making a real serious stand against it well he did say go home and google it I did why would you <laughs> right? That that did Cosby family or people no. ever reach out to you? No. That's why he don't want to talk about it. You like, hey, I'm, I don't want to get no more phone calls. Gonna, like, now y'all gonna clip it up. Uh, it's him nah, talking nah, about it. Did they ever reach out to you? <laughs> no, nobody reached out. You never got no phone calls. Like you're dead. <laughs> you know, I was worried about. That. I did get death threats. Really? On Facebook. I had all oh, types that of don't Facebook. Count. <laughs> this dude, like, I will kill. Uh, yeah. It, or people was just talking. Uh, uh, yeah. People online would say all types of stuff. People say, oh, when you come to this city. We gonna mess you up, or what? We gonna mess you up when we come to see. I was like, all right, let's see. I don't think it's gonna. Happen. I don't think. I mean, it's easier to say stuff online than it is to right to do it in real life. Did it surprise you that so many people didn't believe that any of this could have possibly taken place, and thought these women all came together and, uh, and made up these allegations? Were you like, okay? Yeah, I guess. I mean, I, I could see it, and 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 he was trying to buy a network and they conspired against him. <laughs> yeah, people write me talking about, oh, you and the Illuminati, or you, you were paid off, or, or they gifting you with this. Now anything positive that happens in my career, oh, he got that because of the, he got that because <laughs> of the guy. He's a sellout. <laughs> what do you think about the whole Nate Parker scandal and, and everybody saying, don't go see Birth of a Nate? Not everybody, but some people are saying, don't go see it because of these past allegations, and other people are saying you should be able to separate the arts from the person. Um, I don't know all the specifics of that situation. I, I didn't read the the transcript. But well, he was found. He was, not, he was found not. Yeah, he was yeah. acquitted, and it was when he was at Penn State. And right now, they're bringing these charges back up and telling people not to go see the movie. Do you think, in general, that you should be able to se to separate the art from the person? Uh, I mean, the movie. It's a. It's a. Check out the movie if you want to check out the movie. He, he was a. He was acquitted. He went through the the legal system and. Well, Bill Cosby was, was never tried. That didn't stop you, Hannibal, <laughs> from getting on stage. See, see, you know what? This is why I ain't come up here for a while, man. He <laughs> wanted this to go away. You should have known. <laughs> this is your friends at the Breakfast Club never stopped. <laughs> yeah. Does Bill know that you started this? What's that? Does Bill know you started? Oh, he's it? aware. I'm, I, I don't know. I don't. We don't. We don't text and shit. I, I, I heard. I heard you're banned from performing at Hillman. <laughs> the fake college, <laughs> <laughs> the fake university. Now, What's up with uh? You ever uh, talked to Beanie Siegel about what he said on Tax Podcast? No, he's coming up here. He's coming up here. He's coming up here. Yeah, he's coming. He up got here. at you a little bit. He what did he get say? at me. Yeah, he said um, what did he say? I, I attack a little mama, but want to attack somebody like Fredro or uh, something. Or uh, when a real nigga comes up there, I don't got nothing to say. I thought y'all was cool. I don't know. Rappers go through their different emotions, but he said that for real. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't listen to the Little Mama interview then. Nah, he didn't. I think he saw the clip. You see a forty second clip online. But you he, were going in on Little Mama that whole interview. You were calling her all I kinds of names. I asked Fredro if you want five minutes. I would. Should I? Maybe I should have yelled it and screamed. You want five minutes for me, nigga? I asked him. You want five minutes? You know, what five minutes is right, Animal. What five minutes, Gravin? Yeah. 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 Hannibal, you should ask Charlamagne if he wants five minutes. As Why, much is as he five? <laughs> Why is it five minutes? Why is it five minutes? Because you ever fight after longer than five minutes, you tired. Nobody, Nobody fights for longer than five minutes. Five. Nobody yeah. fights for five, five minutes. minutes. Fights fight are way shorter. So five rings. seconds. It's just one, two, three. That's Professional three fighters. Why not three minutes, like a yeah. round? Professional fighters get exhausted after fighting for three, five minutes. Yes. Regular, regular dudes, a minute and a half, <laughs> tops for a scrap. 45 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> That's a new thing. You want 45, 45 seconds? seconds? You want 45 seconds? 45 seconds? <laughs> I give you 45 seconds. When's the last time you've been in a fight, Hannibal? Like a fist fight? Uh, It's been a minute, man. <laughs> it's been a minute. I think the last one was uh me and my, my cousin were driving in, in Chicago. Uh, about oh, like 2006 or 7 or something like that. 
And I don't know, he's a live wire, man. And, and I don't know if somebody yelled something at the car, threw whatever, he pop out. And that's me. And then it's me, him, and four other dudes. In Chicago? And, Y'all crazy. In Chicago. And immediately, he start, they start giving him the business. And Meeting up your cousin? Yeah. And yeah. so I go I go over there like that. Now you got to fight. I go over and try to get the dude to get my cousin. Somebody sneak me. I'm knocked out. And then somebody, <laughs> I'm just, somebody standing over me. Punch me in. That was my last fight. Wow. Yeah, we were outnumbered. <laughs> that wasn't even really five fight. minutes. Yeah, we got the, we got the <laughs> business. You didn't even get a punch off. That yeah. was yeah, Punched we were one time. I was drunk. It was a mess, <laughs> man. I was it was just one. I was so salty at him about that because it was just one of those situations yeah. where I didn't even do this. Why are we here? <laughs> What is going on? You, just gotta, can, you had to help him. So I you had to help the later. family member. Yeah, I can't yeah, just yeah, stand. Yeah. It was four of them, four or five of them, you two of us. Out. Oh, man, my <laughs> face. I had shows that week. Oh, man. How old were you? When was this? 2006, he said. 2006, 2000, so I was 23, 24, something mm-hmm. like that. Oh, man. Do you, do you drink before you go on stage? Or is that something you're like, I'm, I don't want to mess up? Uh, on my headlining shows where I'm doing an hour, I might have a drink or something like that, but usually I won't drink. Before a, a smaller set, like 15 minutes, I might have a couple and, and get loose on. If I'm, it just, it just depends. What if about an edible or something? No, no, not an edible. I'll take these THC capsules sometimes. Uh, well, it's just it's THC oil, and they kind of mellow me out. And so same I, thing. That's weed. Yeah, I guess yeah. so. I guess it is. But not on, not, not on a regular, but I can take those and perform without getting all weird and paranoid. Now, you got a couple big movies coming, right? I do. Small roles and big movies. That should be my <laughs> Baywatch movie and the Spider-Man movie coming out next year. Who are you playing? The beach? The guy on the beach? The lifeguard? I'm playing. <laughs> no, I'm playing. You're gonna play- be in a speedo. I'm playing. No, I'm not gonna be in a speedo. Uh, I'm gonna be. I'm the friend of the dude that's trying to be uh, in Baywatch. Mm. Yeah, in it. In Spider Man, I play. I play uh, a gym teacher. I play one of the dumbass characters that don't realize he's Spider Man. He's Peter Parker. Oh, I just, got you. Yeah, got I'm you, just a big guy. Like, oh man, this guy's really athletic. That's, but that's don't realize one of your stand up small yeah. role, big movies. Small role, big movies. <laughs> yeah. My that's man Hannibal cool. Burris, the legend killer. All right. Well, Hannibal Burris, we appreciate you for joining us. I don't know if you're going to come back. <laughs> <laughs> you keep trying to hold us off for years at a time. It's over can... now. He know we had to get this out. But we did it twice We did it, already. yeah. We've already, every time he comes Every time he here. comes, we do Bill it. Bill Cosby was no. dead last time he got in? Yes. Nah. Yes. Nah, I, nah, yeah. I, haven't been here. I haven't been here in a couple years. Yeah, he ain't been here since that. You sure? I'm no, positive. I'm positive. Sure no, I think about we did. I'm no, positive. y'all just none of y'all just talked about me a bunch. Oh, maybe so. Maybe just talked about me. But there you have it. Hannibal All Burris. Right. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. If superior hair extensions, clip-ins, and tape-ins are an absolute must, you have to get the number one rated hair extensions in the world. Her Imports is 100% certified real virgin human hair and trusted by celebrity stylists worldwide. Celebrities swear by our products, and now you can too. We now offer financing for our products at herimports.com for a limited time or go into one of our convenient locations in your city. We offer 100% Indian temple bundles that will have you looking flawless for years. Visit us online right now at herimports.com. The Breakfast Club, every weekday morning. Tune in.